Two teams collide, but only one will survive. It's time to find out who's got the stuff of champions on another episode of... Arena! Welcome, everyone, to Arena, the show that turns multiplayer games into competitive sports. I'm Lee Raymond, and we've got two teams that are about to go to war on virtual battlefields. As you can see, the look of the show has changed, and so has the format, but the action is better than ever. We'll kick things off on the console with Soul Calibur 2, then move things on to the PC with Unreal Tournament 2003, and finally, we'll bring it on home with the debut of our newest game, America's Army Special Forces, and we'll play it on our newest toy from Atlanta Cyberspace, the virtual reality pods. We've also amended the law of arena. So let's go to an old friend, in-house paralegal, Kevin Pereira, to get the breakdown. That's right, Lee. Quiet in the courtroom, kids, because we've got a new game in the mix, and we've also got some new scoring rules, so pay attention. There are nine possible points to be won. The console game is worth one point, while the PC games are each worth two. The team with the highest accumulated score will take a point, and the team with the MVP will rack up an additional three points. Now that we've got that crap out of the way, let's take it to Stacy Barcelona for our player introduction. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, everyone, on the last episode of Arena, we saw Forbidden Donuts while well, they knocked the biped heroes off their pretty little feet, and those donuts, they decided to retire undefeated. But that means the Arena Champion Throne is now vacant, and we've got two new teams. We've got Armed and Hammered, we've got Team Warfare, and they're ready to do battle right now. Team Warfare is a league online that we used to play America's Army. The best competition for America's Army plays there, teamwarfare.com, and uh, just here to represent them. I don't work right now, so I play video games about four or five hours a day, maybe. But I currently do not have a girlfriend. My call sign would be Military Minded. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I got it, but I think it was from like a Tupac song. The first game I ever played was on the uh, PC, and it was Lisa Street Larry. When you're seven years old, you know, that's like the funnest game. I play video games probably about 40, 50 hours a week. My favorite game is America's Army. My son and I play also, my other son at home and my daughter also play. And uh, it's become a very much a family um, pastime. My wife thinks my gaming addiction definitely needs some help. I'm looking forward to being on Arena. now. Um, I don't know how well we'll do, but you know, we're gonna give it our best shot. I'd have to say my favorite video game is America's Army. Yeah, I think I'd make it a good online soldier. I think we're all pretty, uh, pretty experienced gamers, so I think we'll do pretty well. Melon uh, is my nickname. It goes back to when I was a little kid. I had a really big head, and I used to really like watermelon. Cracky. Pat and Phil are all really good players. Um, I'm a good player too, I think I'm probably the best. I don't mean to be stuck up or snobbish or conceited or whatever, but I could take all those guys. My friend Pat, um, I met kicking his ass at some video game. Cracky and uh, Matt, they work at Activision uh, with Pat and myself. I have a little dog, uh, Manchester Terrier, named um, Hitler. Kook is my handle, which is the name uh, from a surfer word. It's somebody who's always in the way, uh, always in everything. Um, online, I'm gonna be in your way, I'm gonna be in everything. Before I was on the show uh, with Circus of Vigo, we didn't win, but uh, I'm back now to uh, have that revenge. We're gonna be handing out beatdowns like AOL free trial discs. Uh, I'm a tester for Activision, um, working on data feed right now. I'd say I like shooters the most, but I'm also a fan of uh, platform games, a big Nintendo fanboy. Gonna kick your ass. All right, we're starting things off here in the console pit. All four players from each team will get a chance to make a console contribution as they'll each get a crack at the game. A cumulative tally will be kept for each team, and the squad with the best total score will win the console point. Soul Calibur 2 will be played on the Nintendo GameCube. And while you can button mash your way to victory, masters really won't stand a chance if you're up against the true master of a juggling combo. So now that you know the setup, let's get right to the action. What? In our console game, Soul Calibur 2, Cuke as Mitsurugi versus Nafcon as Nightmare. Fight! Duking it out in the library today. Slow and powerful strikes with that huge sword. It's a Rugi with one heck of a hairdo. <laughs> Going after the Nightmare. This is the Battle of the Ponytails, and down goes... Oh. Oh. Down goes Koof for Team Armed and Hammered. Two. 
Now we'll have round two, which is Alien Jackal, also as Mitsurugi for Arm and Hammer, and Sue as Maxi. Go, go, go. Leave it to Namco to name the character after a feminine hygiene product. Coming off to a quick start, and oh, crap. Maxi unleashes a grab and gets a sword through the abdomen. And Maxi going right after Mitsurugi. But he's back up. Wait, wait, wait. I want to do this. Oh, and with a little poke to the ribs, Mitsurugi retires Ensu. Round three, Soul Calibur two. we will have Melon posing as Ivy. Warfare's military-minded. He picks Nacrid. Oh. And we're off in the third round with a quick kick from Ivy. Ivy wielding that weaponry. But notice just how much more powerful Necrid's shots are, Lee. Both players halfway down on health. Excellent blocking. When you look like Necrid does, you better be good. Oh. Speaking from personal experience? Absolutely. You're an ugly man, Light. I still love you. And love is nothing coming from Ivy. Necrid going down ugly and in short order. Round four of Soul Calibur two, Cracky will be posing as Killick and Insomniac for Team Warfare as Link. The Spock wannabe. Oh, you just you just got a bunch of fan mail, let me tell you from that quote. Killick has the ranged advantage here unless Link chooses to uh, use that C-stick and unleash some uh, arrows or bombs, or maybe he'll just be a pummeling stick. Push him. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 and with a ring out, Link lets him know he likes it better cell shaded and sends him out of the ring. It was two to two in the four rounds for the fastest victories. Alien Jackal for Arm and Hammer will be going as, say it, Kevin. Mitsurugi! And for Warfare, it will be Nafcon as Nightmare. It all comes down to the sudden death playoff. And out of the gate, quick, Nightmare with a blade to the face, but Mitsurugi says, I don't think so, buddy. Very evenly matched are these teams. I don't think so, buddy sounds a lot more intimidating in Japanese, just so you know. Both teams showing their arsenal of moves. Uh, one more time. Uh, 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 Mitsurugi lands a punishing blow and gets the win for Team Armed and Hammer in sudden death. Two evenly matched teams, but in right. the end, in sudden death, it was Alien Jackal for Armed and Hammer pulling it out. That's rightly, but also in the end, it's all about points here in the arena, and Navcom for Team Warfare, he got the MVP award, so we'll see how that affects things later on. But in the sudden death, it was Alien Jackal, Stacy's with him in the console pit. Thank you, Lee. I am down here with Alien Jackal of Armed and Hammer, who just had a 19-second KO in sudden death overtime. Is that your fastest knockout ever? No, I can get a little bit faster if you give me another shot. 19 seconds is pretty fast. I wouldn't be complaining if I were you. However, we know that you did not claim the MVP status. I know you have a lot of confidence in your team, but are you feeling kind of down about that? Nah, you see, we got to give them a mercy point in there somewhere, make them feel a little bit better about themselves. So that's that one. We're just going to take the other two hands down. Well, that was very nice of you. It's all about mercy points down here. Lee, back to you. Thank you, Stacy. Congratulations, Alien Jackal. So, Arm and Hammer wins the console round, but Warfare leads the all-important MVP point race after the break. We'll show no mercy with Unreal Tournament 2003, and later, we'll unveil America's Army, Special Forces, and the Atlantis Cyberspace Virtual Reality Pods. That's coming up. Stick around for more Arena. Before the break, Arm and Hammer took the early lead in a squeaker and sudden death, but we're just getting started. Let's go to Kevin in the PC ring for Unreal Tournament 2003. Kevin. Now in Unreal Tournament 2003, we'll be playing capture the flag. And in CTF, each team has a base where its flag resides. Now the object of the game is to grab your opponent's flag and bring it back to your own base, which will then score you one point. Whichever team scores the most points in a five minute round is declared the winner. Today we're using elect fields. The static towers from the mark and flow stand majestically above purgatory where one false move will drop you straight into hell. What? And round one, Unreal Tournament 2003 is underway, armed and hammered. Let me take the console game, leads. Get out of my base. And both teams stepping it up rather quickly, Lee. Lots of action within the first few moments. Military-minded with the quad damage power-up as Kook enters Team Warfare's base but gets to... So far, a defensive battle. Each team trying to feel each other out. Going for the flag. Hey, Don't worry about it. He's not going anywhere. Excellent team communication. Fierce gun battle. Down goes Insomniac. Boom! <laughs> Adding their own sound effects to the game. No offense whatsoever here so far. Totally a defensive battle as Jackal for Armed and Hammered goes down ugly. Melon is in possession of the flag, fighting off a member of Team Warfare. The first attempt at a little offense. Melon for Armed and Hammered. What's up? Who wants some? And Melon is now on his way back to base. Seeming to navigate the map 
very effectively. Melon doing some moonwalking there. Oh, I just jumped off the map. <laughs> and Melon takes a nosedive off the side of the map, clips all the way down, and then derezzes Tron style. Turning into green digits. That was luck, dude. <laughs> and Warfare has made no attempt whatsoever at even grabbing a flag. Well, it's not so much that, Lee. It's just that they're being stopped midway. They're just testing the waters right now. Coming in. And, and on cue, Kook for Arvin Hammered grabs a flag. Making his way midway with a rocket launcher, putting a couple shots off just in case. I'm about to score. Kook attempting to fare better than did his teammate Mellon. This could be it. Will he make it back to his base? And there is the flag cap that decides it all. Lee. Kook wins it. Two. Round two underway. Armin Hammered having taken round one moments into sudden death overtime. Yeah, Lee, every match so far in this arena has been down to the wire. Let's see if Team Warfare and Team Armin Hammered choose to play a little more offense. And Navcon peeks his head out of the base just in time to see the lightning bolt headed right for his nose. Oh, what's up? And there's Mellon for Team Armed and Hammered running away with Team Warfare's flag. Mellon, having grabbed the flag last time, had met a untimely death. And Mellon has an escort. It's Kook from Armed and Hammered making sure that Mellon makes his way back to the base safely. Oh, well. Got him Went down, but he, he served his purpose. Melon with the shock rifle combo. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Places the flag a point again for Armin Hammered. Kevin, this could be a turning point here. All right, I think that's it. I think we sealed this deal. Armed and Hammered claiming victory early within round two here. Warfare has the work cut out for him. Warfare's going to have a lot of D coming up in the next few moments. And Kook for Armed and Hammered grabs the flag. You over there, Mel? Let me know. This episode of Arena is it's quickly turning into a victory for Armin Hammered. Get off my flag. <laughs> Notice Kook is waiting to capture his flag, waiting for another team member to get in position to pick it right back up. There's capture two here in round two. Mellon, as you spoke, grabs the flag to move in again, position to score. Kook waiting to capture the flag, and the moment he does, Mellon was there to pick it right back up. He's on his way back in. Team Warfare in big trouble here, Kevin. Insomniac for Warfare running around trying to find something to shoot. Here's a tip. Look for the big flag waving. It's yours. Here I go. And Mellon for Armed and Hammer adds a little salt to the wound. Three nothing. Round two goes to Armed and Hammered. And round three underway here at Unreal Tournament 2003, Armed and Hammered having taken rounds one and two. Rightly at this point, Team Warfare is playing for pride. Although to their credit, Lee, they did tell me that they are waiting for America's Army. That is their time to shine. If I'm not mistaken, Warfare has not even grabbed a flag. Lee, for once in your life, you are not mistaken. They have not touched the flag. Nice. As Kook picks up for Armin Hammer. At this point, I feel like I'm watching an instant replay. Lee, Kook with the flag and the quad damage and a minigun. <laughs> Shot cracking. And Kook is back in base, ready to plant one. And there he is. Kook makes it one to nothing here in round three of Unreal Tournament 2003. Kook has taken over Unreal Tournament. All right, here comes some more. Oh, man, that was long range. Nice war. Lots of chatter from the side of Armed and Hammered. Warfare, relatively quiet. And Mellon grabs a flag. The flag, rocket launcher, and quad damage as he double jumps his way. But Navcon. A sight we've not seen very much here in Unreal Tournament 2003, grabbing the flag for Team Warfare. That's right, Warfare in possession this round. Well, momentarily, as not Nafcon so goes down, dropping the flag. Oh, oh yeah, dude. Get Three ready. Up. Mellon for Armed and Hammered. He still has possession of his team's flag, and he plants it right there, two to nothing. And that's a perfect example of taking advantage of your competitor's ill fortune. Well, some call it ill fortune. I call it lack of skill, Lee. Kook once again, grabbing the flag for Armin Hammer. Oh, oh, and Kook just mowing down members of Warfare on the way back, making is. this a 3-0 game. Clearly, Kook is the MVP in this one. And if I were a bet man, I'd say this 3-0 lead is going to be insurmountable. Help for him for Team Warfare. The W key lets you move forward. And there's Mellon for Armed and Hammered with the flag. You can oh, do it! Has time to get over there. More. Yeah. And there it is. And Unreal Tournament was a blowout as Armed and Hammered takes all three rounds. What was the difference? The difference was Kook and Mellon working in tandem. These guys were in constant communication. They knew where each other was, and they were able to rack up the points for their team. And Kook right now is with the lovely Stacey Barcelona. Thanks, guys. I'm in the pit with Kook from Armed and Hammered. Now, you guys were really vocal when Mellon fell off the map, but communication is key, and it helped you guys claim a lot of flags. Definitely. Mel and I kept in communication the whole time. Uh, when he'd drop a flag, I'd pick it up. When he'd drop a flag, I'd pick it up. Uh, it definitely helped us. Eight flags, three rounds, not bad. And uh, doing a little smack talking, too. Tell me what you just told everybody else. Oh, yeah, like Alien Jackal said, uh, there's no more mercy, no more MVPs. And we're beating them fools like they owe us money. Ka-ching! Ka-ching! Lee, back to you.
Well, Stacy Kaching is right as warfare is being hammered over the head by armed and hammered. And when we come back, our teams will answer the call of duty with America's Army Special Forces being played on the Atlanta Cyberspace Virtual Reality Pods. That's coming up on Arena! Welcome back to Arena. In today's first game, Arm and Hammer squeaked out a sudden death victory in Soul Calibur 2, but then lived up to their name by showing no mercy. They were armed and they hammered to a resounding 3-0 win in Unreal Tournament 2003. But now it's time for the latest and greatest addition to the Arena, America's Army Special Forces. Let's go to Sergeant Hansen for the briefing on today's mission. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm Sergeant First Class Hansen. I'm here to brief you on the combat search and rescue mission. We have one downed Black Hawk helicopter with one surviving crew member. Your mission will be to infiltrate the compound, negotiate your way through the compound to the Black Hawk helicopter. Once you destroy the helicopter, you must navigate your way through these buildings here where the surviving crew member is. You are to make contact with the crew member and to move him out of the area. Standard rules of engagement apply. You are not to assault anyone unless he shows himself to be hostile to your mission. Are there any questions? Good luck. Armed and hammered was chosen to go first, and the team is suiting up right now. And once these virtual soldiers are ready, they'll have 10 minutes to meet their objective. Each completed objective is worth five points. Each kill is worth a point, but each death is a three-point penalty. And finishing the round with your entire team alive will earn five bonus points. Now, the team with the best score will score five points in the end, and any obstacles avoided through effective teamwork are each worth three points. It looks like Team Armed and Hammered is locked and loaded, so let's see how they do. And America's Army Special Forces is underway. Team armed and hammered. First up, two objectives, Kevin. They need to rescue a pilot, and they need to destroy a Blackhawk helicopter. Cracky, eyes on me, stand up. Mellon is the squad leader for this round, and he's uh, instructed the two teams to split apart, it looks like. The landscape is such that an enemy can lurk behind every corner. Watch out. Alien Jackal laying down some fire. Alien Jackal takes down an enemy. I got him, I got him. Mellon's doing an excellent job coordinating his soldiers thus far. The coordination is key here. Cracky, stand and come with me up these stairs, run. As two members of Armed and Hammered make their way up the stairs. Very cautious is Armed and Hammered being. And it looks like they spotted an enemy. There's Kook laying down some fire. And here's where it's vital that Mellon steer everyone in the right direction. The black cock down's right over that wall. Kook up top, covering, and it looks like they took him out, Lee. As they've gotten closer to that Black Hawk helicopter, the resistance has become more fierce. Very tense moment here, Lee. Fire could erupt at any moment as they try to secure this objective. All right, it's ready for the RPG. And they're calling for a grenade here. It looks like someone has retrieved the sensitive data from the downed Black Hawk. Armed and hammered, doing an excellent job spotting the enemy forces as they surround that downed Black Hawk. I say just go up and kick it a few times. They retrieve the data. They're going to blow the helicopter up. And there it is. The Black Hawk explodes in a particle effect. There we got it. All right. Now the next objective is to find the pilot. They wasted eight minutes destroying that Black Hawk, and that's probably going to cost them in the end. That pilot seems to be very elusive. It looks like the squad has broken up, and that's costing them in communication. All right, where are we going, guys? And Mellon leading his squad through the room, making sure everybody's covering a corner. They're under heavy fire at the moment. Alien Jackal standing up with a teammate crouched behind the corner. He's out in the open, though, Lee. They captured the Black Hawk helicopter, blew it up, and were unable to get to the pilot in time. And Mellon did a great job leading his squad. Unfortunately, they just took way too much time, and that cost him in the end. All right, and I can see the Team Warfare is getting strapped into the Atlantis Cyberspace Virtual Reality Pods. Let's see how they do. And Team Warfare's crack at America's Army. The captain for Team Warfare is Insomniac. Alpha team, move up. And right away, Lee, we can hear that they've separated themselves into an Alpha and Bravo team. We'll see if they split up once they navigate these stairs here. Notice the speed at which this team is moving, Lee. They must have studied this map. They knew exactly where they wanted to go and where they wanted all people in their team facing. Enemy spotted, we hear, coming out of Team Warfare. Fire has been opened up. Enemy down. Enemy down. Speed and stealth, guys. Stay steady. They're Captain Insomniac barking out orders very aggressively. Insomniac and Insu using the over-under strategy, Lee. One person standing up, the other crouched in front to provide fire to his blind side. Team Warfare said America's Army is their game, Lee, and apparently so far they were not lying. Nafcon takes it out on the architecture, very unhappy with the low, low ceilings. He wanted them vaulted, Lee. Check corner, check corner. Good communication going on. Sounds like they're calling football plays in the street. You go down to the car, hang a left, I'll throw it. Insu crouches and creeps along as a teammate covers his back. Go, Nafcon, go, 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 go. And under the cover of a smoke grenade, Nafcon makes his way up to the corner. And Lee Insomniac spots a hostile and pegs him as he takes the enemy out. Insomniac climbs a ladder and runs headfirst into an enemy. 
Hostile spotted. Hostile spotted. Team Warfare seem to be aggressively navigating the landscape right out of the chute. Now they've hit a snag and they're getting nowhere. I'm surprised to see Warfare splitting up like this, Lee. Insomniac just took heavy fire by himself. All right, guys, I'm going to be at the bottom of the ladder. NAFCON takes out a member of the opposing force. Insomniac runs in. He's he's securing the pilot at this point. Pilot is secure. Their other objective, which is to secure the Black Hawk helicopter and disable it, has not been achieved yet. we got to move out. Let's go, baby. Insomniac barking out orders. Picking up the pace for his team. And Team Warfare is spending a lot of time inside this building. I don't know how that can be an effective way of getting that Black Hawk helicopter. Enemy spotted, second floor. Enemy spotted, first floor. Insomniac is barking out enemy locations and with a well-placed grenade he takes out the enemy that black hawk is in plain sight of insu but unfortunately they were not able to secure the black hawk in time well that was quite a game armed and hammered took some time to get acclimated and that was the difference it cost them because they ran out of time that's rightly but on the other side warfare hit the ground running and while they didn't complete all of their objectives overall their mission was a success because they killed all their enemies so Warfare finally gets into the winner's column with America's Army Special Forces walking away with two points. And remember, Arm & Hammer dominated Unreal Tournament 2003 right. for two points, then eked out a win and a point in Soul Calibur 2. Arm & Hammer also took the total accumulated score point, making the score 4-2, to two. but remember, the MVP is still worth three points. So the MVP, ladies and gentlemen, -da 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 -da, will decide today's winner, and the MVP is... Wait for it. NAFCON! NAFCON giving Team Warfare the cover behind victory. Let's go to Stacy with the winners. Thank you, Lee. I'm here with NAFCON of Team Warfare, the very first time we get to actually talk today. How does it feel to be the MVP? It feels great to be the MVP, and I'm really happy with the whole outcome of the, the game show. Now, you realize your team is standing here because of you, everything you did today. How does that make you feel? Uh, it feels really good. I think it was a, really a team effort, though. I think I was in the right place at the right time there at the end. And because of my team, we were able to win. It was really a team effort. Very nice and very humble. Give some words of advice to the next team that's going to play you on the arena. Well, I hope the next team is more prepared than the last team will be, because we will be for sure. You heard it here first. Lee, back to you. So in the end, Armed and Hammered got nailed by Team Warfare's military prowess, and it just goes to show that consistency and a never-say-die attitude can pay off, as Warfare looked terrible, but they will live to see another day, because they won. For Kevin Pereira and Stacey Barcelona, I'm Lee Rearman. We'll see you next time on Arena. Well, now that you've seen the competition, we want to see if you've got the stuff of champions. So if you're at least 18 years of age and live in or near the Los Angeles area, then throw your hat into the ring by going to our website. Visit us at g4tv.com slash arena and sign up to compete on the show that turns multiplayer video games into a competitive sport. And we will see you in the arena.